Cole Johnson and the Dukes are in the red zone. Johnson dropping back to throw. He's going to launch this one in the end zone, and it's a touchdown. He finds Scott Bracey for a 13-yard touchdown, and the Dukes are going to go up 17-3 here at the end of the third quarter. And this is the Dukes' first time in Division I football. What's going on, YouTube? Wild Lion Games here, and we have NCAA Football 23, a.k.a college football revamped all the new teams and uh we are starting a dynasty mode with jmu just created my coach and right now we're actually going in and we are re uh what would you call it reorganizing the sunbelt conference the sunbelt realignment is what we're doing right now so we've added jmu that's going to be our team marshall now in the sunbelt app state coastal carolina odu Southern Miss is in there now, too. We've had some teams drop out. New teams have joined. Western Kentucky, psh, goodbye. See ya. No longer in the Sun Belt. So we're doing a little bit of Sun Belt realignment here, making sure. So let's see. I'm going to make Division A the East, Division B the West. And uh, we're going to go in and retitle those to East and West as well. But right now, I'm just going in, making sure everybody's on the right side. And, uh, yeah, we're going to take JMU. They finally moved up the 1AA champs a couple times in uh, 2016, and I believe the first time was in 04. And uh, they've actually, we've actually had some pretty good success against uh, Division I teams. But let's take a look at the preseason top 10. Coming to number 10 is North Carolina. Number 9, Notre Dame. Cincinnati at number 8. And Iowa State Cyclones taking the number 7 spot. Texas A&M at number six and let's go ahead and get to the top five and that is Georgia the Bulldogs at number five and Ohio State will fill in the four which leaves Clemson at three and there's only two options left from here I would think right so let's see what number two is Oklahoma so obviously Alabama is going to be number one you guys know that let's take a look at some of these Heisman candidates we have in the preseason as well we got Nick Billups, a freshman, Carlos. Damn, all these guys are fresh. All freshman quarterbacks are the Heisman preseason candidates. But we got Middle Tennessee State scheduled on our first game. And that is actually accurate for the uh, real-life JMU schedule. JMU taking on Middle Tennessee State at home in real life. And uh, they got Norfolk State second. I, I believe they're actually playing at Norfolk State. And they've got a bye week in week three. But here we go. Fairly even matchup. JMU, the Dukes, got a slight edge over Middle, Middle Tennessee. And uh, let's go ahead and get down to the field for the coin toss. Welcome to Bridge Fourth Stadium, where we have the James Madison Dukes taking on the Middle Tennessee. I don't know. I think they're the Mustangs or something. I'm not really sure. The Blue Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> the Mustangs, not even close. Not even close. Well, let's get down here to kickoff, guys. JMU, NCAA Football 23 Dynasty. This is episode one, game one of season one. Opening kickoff is a touchback. Let's see the first play from scrimmage and Mobley running back from Middle Tennessee. He's going to run somebody over, picks up five yards. Here we go, second and five. Mobley's going to bounce this one outside. He picks up nine, and he looks like a truckload, man. I would not want to get in front of this guy at running back. And Cunningham, they're going to do a little read option. Chase Cunningham, two-yard loss on the run. JMU is ready for that read option. Here they come again, another read option. Cunningham, nowhere to go. He's going to lose another four in this JMU Dukes defense. Third and 17, James Madison. The defense stands strong. They're going to keep it at fourth and seven. So let's see what this Dukes offense looks like at the FBS level. First play from FBS. And this is going to be a complete pass from Cole Johnson to Antoine Wells for 17 yards. And just like that, in one play, the Dukes look comfortable at the FBS level. First and 10, Johnson. Drop him back, and he's going to find Clayton Cheatham. Cheatham's going to get a little bit of yards afterwards. Picks up 17, and now we got first and 10 again. JMU applying pressure, and Cole Johnson hangs on to the ball a little too long. He's going to lose nine yards on the sack, bringing up third and 19. Dukes are backed up now. Johnson dropping back to throw, and this one's going to be picked off. 
the corner steps in front of it and he breaks the tackle he's past the 50 down to the 40 and out of bounds middle tennessee has the ball just like that so here's cunningham with another chance and this time he's gonna get sacked for six yards the pressure from this duke's defense is just too much third and four for the blue raiders cunningham and this one is also picked up jmu aml he's down to the 50 the 40 all the way down to the 32 and jmu picks the ball right right back and here's cole johnson over the middle for brown and brown's gonna get some yards after the carry that's 18 on the pickup and we are going to be scoreless here at the end of the first quarter a couple of turnovers looks like both of these offenses are still trying to iron out the kinks but the defenses look pretty good cole johnson scrambling out to his right on third and nine down in the red zone and he fires a dangerous ball scott bracy hangs on to it for a nine yard reception it is fourth and inches the dukes are going for it haven't seen much action from obese but he gets in the end zone and Percy Iagayeopas say scores and the Dukes go up 7-0 and Chase Cunningham is now sacked for the second time this time for a loss of three bringing up third and 13 Cunningham dropping back to throw and there's nobody in sight and JMU is going to force Middle Tennessee to punt once again so here's Obase up the middle picking up well more than five yards that's a gain of 13 third and four Cole Johnson dropping back to throw, and he's going to fire a rocket. Scott Bracey once again hanging on to the ball in traffic. That's two big catches from him. I'm sure we'll see more from him later. And Cole Johnson gets rid of the football, almost gets sacked. They're going to bring out the field goal unit. And the kick is up from Racky, and it is good. JMU goes up 10 0. Just a couple minutes left here in the half, and oh boy, this one's going out of bounds. You can't do that. You can't do that. Oh, you know, JMU has the strategy. They like to kick the ball into the in between the uh, the hashes and the sidelines inside the 10 in the corner, and it, it's very risky, and that, that's exactly why. And here's Chase Cunningham breaking tackles left and right. Nobody on the defense can tackle him. He's going to pick up eight third and two now for the blue raiders cunningham he completes the pass but no yards gain the defense is right there to swallow that up jmu has the football again first and ten little screen pass here middle tennessee's defense is not ready for it obese breaking tackles picks up seven and the clock is winding down jmu's gonna have to burn a timeout here they got two left here's clayton cheatham he's gonna get out of bounds picking up six yards it's not a whole lot. One minute to go. The Dukes have wasted a lot of time down here in their own in, in their own half. And ooh, and Cole Johnson getting sacked for 12 yards. Third and 22. Johnson dropping back to throw. He's searching. He's moving to his own. A terrible pass. I don't know if that slipped out of his hands because his intentions were to go deep to his receiver downfield, but I don't know what happened with that ball. That's another turnover for the Dukes on offense. And Mobley, he's a, that's a big running back, man. That's a big running back. He is not easy to take down third and eight for Middle Tennessee. They wanna try and get some points on the board here. Almost intercepted by Julio. And Middle Tennessee is gonna have to settle for a field goal themselves on fourth and eight. And this kick is going to be up, and it is right down the middle and good. 10-3, to three, and they're going to kick off about 17 seconds left. Let's see what the Dukes do here on the return. We got Van Horst back to receive. He's got the ball. He's making a move. He bounces outside. He's got open grass. He's at the 40, the 50, across the other 40, 61 yards for Solomon Van Horst, giving the Dukes a great opportunity here with nine seconds to get into field goal range. Cole Johnson's going to find Ravenel. Devin Ravenel picks up seven. It's going to be a long field goal, guys. 51 yards to go. Let's see if we can kick this through the uprights. We gave it everything we had, and it's right down the middle. Just not enough. Dude, this had to be close. This had to. Look, let's look at this again. Oh, my God, dude. Like, by inches. We're talking inches here. So we go into halftime, JMU up 10 to three. Not a bad half. Defense, we've showed up. Offense, we gotta figure it out, man. 
We got to get into a rhythm on offense. Cole Johnson with the play action. Scott Bracey, this dude. He's a uh, he's reliable man. He's like my Wes Welker. He's he's a uh, what is what does Chris Collinsworth always say? Madden the the tight end is like the quarterback security blanket. That annoying quote he just repeats constantly. Uh, that's that's a uh, Scott Bracey for me right now, man. He's my security blanket. I know I can go to him. And how about Thornton across the middle on a second down play, and he picks up 15. Johnson hands this off to Obese, and Obese makes a couple guys miss. He's gonna pick up seven. He's actually having a quiet day, but a really solid performance right now, guys. I mean, he's averaging over six yards a carry. There he goes again for another seven-yard carry. And here's Cole Johnson on second and eight. He's going to take the sack. Just doesn't see the edge rusher coming off to the left. So here we go. Third and 17 for JMU. And Cole Johnson's going to take another sack. And this defensive line for Middle Tennessee is really penetrating that offense. JMU needs to figure something out to give Cole Johnson a little bit more time to get the ball downfield. Because right now his only option is short passes. And that's not going to, you can't just, you can't just throw short the entire time. We got to mix it up. But I don't have time to scan downfield because uh, there's just not getting the protection. Here's Lane. That is Middle Tennessee's biggest play of the day for 26 yards. Things were looking grim for him. You just saw the yards there. They were being held under 50 yards up until this entire time. And then oh, there's a fumble on the play, and JMU recovers. Let's go. JMU Dukes. James Madison with the turnover again. You know that plays. They've been reading that read option perfectly all day long. Middle Tennessee fumbles at this time, and here's Palmer, the backup running back. Latrell Palmer picks up nine. I tell you what, this JMU rush offense, they're pretty solid. Cole Johnson dropping back to throw. Second and one. He's rolling out to his left. He's going to pick up the first down and very wisely slides. I wouldn't mistake him for a running back at all. And he's going to find Latrell Palmer again out in the flats. Picks up six yards. And the JMU offense is moving down the field. Third and one. They're going to give this to Obase up the gut. He gets that with ease with a great push from the offensive line. Didn't have to do much work there. So second and 10. Johnson dropping back to throw. And he's going for the end zone. And he finds none other than Scott Bracey for the end zone. That's a touchdown. JMU's going to go up 17-3 to here. As Cole Johnson, it seems like he has found his favorite target, at least for this game, man. Scott Bracey, reliable. Second and four for Middle Tennessee. That's going to bring up third and two. Mobley, nowhere to go. Let's see what the JMU defense does here, and they're ready for it, man. They know they want to feed Mobley, and that JMU defense is stout. They have completely shut down Middle Tennessee's offense today, and here's Obasay off the screen pass again, picking up a first down, and that's going to put Cole Johnson over 150 passing yards, and here he goes again. He's going to find Brown, and Brown's going to pick up a nice gain here after the catch for 15 yards. JMU back in the red zone here. Here's Obase up the gut for a huge gain. 11 yards on the pickup. First and goal. Obase thought he was going to get in the end zone here. He's got 15 carries, 94 yards on the day, and there's an injury down on the field. It's a Middle Tennessee guy. We hope he's all right. And Latrell Palmer is going to scooch into the end zone and make this a 24-3 game in the fourth quarter. And uh, I would say that barring any miracles, guys, this one should be over. I think the JMU Dukes are going to get a victory in their first game as an FBS school. And in fact... When you go back and look, oh, here's a big gain here by Lane. Jalen Lane, if you remember earlier in the game, he had a big 26-yard reception down the middle, and the quarterback's going to find him again and connect. And here we go, another corner route over to Lane. Once again, Jalen Lane picking up 19. Looks like Cunningham should have been targeting him sooner. He's had three catches in the second half for about 20 yards a pop. And Cunningham's going for the end zone, McCormick. Can't come down with it, but he does break the pass up. Second and 10 for Middle Tennessee. Cunningham dropping back to throw, and he's going to complete this pass. 
Not going to be enough for the first down. We got a third and three here, guys. Big stop for JMU. I mean, even if Middle Tennessee scores, I think it's over. But we want to keep them to no touchdowns. And this one is, they're not scoring, man. That's way in the back of the end zone. They're going to go for it on fourth down, of course. Why not? Let's see what happens here. Fourth and three. Cunningham dropping back to throw. And he's going to find his target, Mobley. But Mobley, he's got three defenders just waiting to meet him. And JMU causes another turnover. Obese just needs to get a first down. He's going to pick up two here. And they're going to go for it on second and two. One first down is going to end the game. And just like that, the James Madison Dukes are going to be 1-0 their first time as an FBS school. Cue the music. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, there's going to be more of this JMU Dynasty coming toward your YouTube channel. We're going to be recruiting players. A lot of these guys on this offense are seniors, man. we got to replace them, but hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more NCAA football JMU Dynasty content, well, this is the channel to subscribe to. All right, until next time, peace.